please. Allow me to show you something. What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. We are here in New York City. It is beautiful. It is nice. It's a little cold. But really, really excited. As you can tell, the audio is a little different because we left the mic at home, but we're still doing it live here for you today with our awesome headset. Moving on. We've got a cool custom way for you guys today. Uh, we're not doing shoes this time. Doing something a little different and really, really excited for it. Going up top. Got a nice custom jacket coming to you guys today. What's up, guys? So... Greta is not here today. She is doing an amazing uh, like photo op in the city. I don't know if that's the right word. Probably not, but still, she's doing it. Uh, so it's just me today, so I apologize if the camera quality is not what you're used to. But still, let's do this thing. This custom will be a two-part custom. We're doing the first one today, and the next one's coming soon. We were able to snag up an amazing vintage Burberry jacket, and that's what we're customizing today. And I'm super excited to do that with you. Our first step is gonna be taking measurements on the top part of the jacket to make sure the letters are perfectly spaced out and not too big or too small. I then place the patches on top of the jacket to get a better understanding of where the letters should be. Using my stencil machine and wax paper, I cut out some mock letters to figure out where I wanted them to be on the jacket and to see what the size and font should be. I tried using the way Greta had designed Yarbrough on the back of my Skechers boots to see if it would work with this jacket and maybe make them like a themed piece. Like a goof, I mixed up the G and the H and switched them around. Uncertain of how the letters should be, I took a football jersey to see how the letters were on that. Measuring the letters to see what their size and shape and then adjusting my design accordingly. I went through five different letters to find out what font and size was the best. And now Greta's back and she can help me film and she has a cool eye and she can help me do the patches and cool stuff like that. Yeah. Using packing tape, I taped down letters to the jacket. It doesn't really matter what kind of tape you use, just make sure that it doesn't leave residue or uh, damage the jacket in any way. I use packing tape because it's clear and it made it really easy for me to secure the letters and the patches without damaging the jacket because damaging the jacket is not good. The main reason for this is to see how the jacket will look once it's on my body because things look differently when you wear them than when they just lay down on the floor. So far, so good. I like the way it looks, like the way it hangs. Greta made a couple adjustments here and there, but it's looking really, really good. So using my Cricut Maker, I'm trying to cut the leather to make the letters for the back of the jacket. Now the Cricut Maker recommends I use a separate attachment, but I didn't want to spend that much money on it and wanted to see if the blade itself would work since it's faux leather and it might have an easier time cutting this than it would normal leather. I wanted to give this a try because getting that new attachment would be an extra $45 to $50. And I don't want to spend that much money if I don't have to. Here I'm trying to make sure that all the letters are rearranged perfectly so that when the machine cuts the leather, it's not going to pull it off the mat. Trying to make sure that all letters fit on the mat is also really, really important. I picked up a neat tip from YouTube where if you stab your blade in a piece of aluminum, it'll help sharpen the blade and also help it last longer. The leather wasn't staying on the mat, so let's try this again. This time using painter's tape to hold down the leather. As soon as I realized the machine wasn't cutting properly, I went ahead and stopped it and then started thinking about ways I could possibly make this work like cutting out one square, taping it down, and then doing one letter at a time. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and wait and order the attachment rather than risking breaking my blade and wasting any more materials. I decided to move on and go ahead and put splatter paint on the jacket before putting patches on it. So right now I'm mixing Angela's Flat White with Too Soft. The Too Soft is gonna help the fabric stay nice and soft once the paint is on it. To create the splatter effect, I'm using the toothbrush method. You simply take your toothbrush, preferably an old one, 
I wouldn't use your brand new toothbrush to brush your teeth after this, but you take your toothbrush, put it in the paint, and then simply flick it onto the jacket. I didn't want to go too heavy with the splatter effect because we're gonna be putting patches on it later and I don't want it to look too unbalanced if we go ham with the paint. That's it for this video. Part two is coming to you soon. To not miss out on it, go ahead and hit the notification bell. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. And to never miss a video, hit the subscribe button. And also, comment down below to let us know what your favorite patch is. Catch you guys in the next one. <gasps> Deuce. As well as throwing it on there with the bristles. <laughs> <laughs> You still here? What are you guys doing for Valentine's Day? Let me know down in the section. No. <laughs> Bye.